Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you how to survive a bear attack. Just kidding, or actually just like normal, we're going to be talking about exactly what it says on the title. So without any further ado, make sure you've subscribed to the channel, and let's jump into the video. Just like the title says, we're going to be going over the basics of using particles inside of Fusion in Resolve 17. Right now, this is our edit page. What we're going to do here is actually make a fusion composition that we're going to be building our particle effect in. You can also do this on an adjustment layer, but for this use case, I'm going to be using the fusion composition. So over in our bottom left, we have our toolbox. If you don't see this, come up to your top left and click on effects library, and then you'll have your toolbox. Once we're here, we're going to click on effects. And then second from the top here, we're going to drag Fusion Composition into our timeline, just like that. Now that that's in there, we're going to pop into Fusion, which is this little magic wand down here in that main dock. And then we'll see that we only have a media out. And what we're going to do with this is make our particle effect on top of it so that it displays in our media out. We're going to start this by getting some of our particle tools. So in this main hotbar of tools here, we have three that are specifically for particles. We have a particle emitter, a particle merge, and a particle render. We're going to need an emitter and a render for this one. Merges will come into play when you need more than one particle effect to be in one like group of effects. But just now for the basics, we're just going to go particle emitter, particle render, directly into media out. Now, if I was to try to run our particle emitter directly into media out without that render, it's not going to work. And it won't go into a merge or anything like that either. So you're going to need to run this emitter into a renderer and then into the media out or wherever it needs to go to meet back in with your main chain. So the vast majority of our controls today that we're going to be going over are inside this emitter. The only reason we're using the renderer is so that we can actually see what we're doing. So we have our emitter right here, and you can see that we start with a circle. If we zoom way in, we can see that there are some particles in there already, but they probably don't look how you want them to look, and there aren't as many of them or whatever you need. So that's where our inspector tools come in for a particle emitter. So we have all of these menus in here. We have controls, sets, style, region, and settings. And then in each of these main menus, we have some sub menus. Like right here, we have an emitter drop down tab, we have velocity, we have rotation, and spin. Now, the first thing that you're probably going to want to change is the number. And this is a nice one to be able to play with because as we zoom in, this is the number at maximum, and this is the number at minimum. So we can see that everywhere between there, we get a few more particles or a few less, depending on whether we're going left or right. We have number variance, and this will change the number of them that are on screen over time as your thing plays. So I think the default length for a fusion composition is 5 seconds, so that's how long we have right here. So if we drag this all the way to the end, you can see that we just get more and more particles as time goes on, but we don't really want it to just become a serious clump like that. So we have to adjust the lifespan. A shorter lifespan is going to mean that a dot will appear and then go away in less time than a longer lifespan. In order for these to look more natural, I like to include a lot of lifespan variants. That means that some of them will show up for a significantly longer amount of time than other ones do. So some will just kind of blink in and then another one will be there for a long time. And I think it just looks a lot better. And then color, we're going to leave this as use style color because then we can go into style and we can add a color right here. Position variance does pretty much what you would think. It's going to dictate the position of that particle and it's gonna say how different can that be from like zero. Aside from the emitter, we have velocity as our next little drop down menu here. And velocity here is going to refer to our speed. So if we have a high velocity and we hit play on this, let's turn that way up and we watch, they all just kind of shoot out off to the right. But if we have a low velocity, very slow, and then we hit play, they move much slower off to the right than they did before. No velocity here at zero, they're all just gonna stay right where they are when they start. Full honesty, 
As much as I've used this, I've never needed to use this inherent slider or the inherent variant slider, and I have no idea what they do. So we're gonna skip on right past those because you must not need them for the basics. So angle is going to change the angle at which they move with their velocity. So right now you can't tell that anything happened because our velocity is zero, but if we turn that up, you can see that now they're traveling up. We can move that angle all around and all of these controls are keyframeable. So if you want them to gradually speed up over time, you can make keyframes and speed up their velocity over time. It's really controllable, it's very cool. Angle variance means some of them are gonna go different ways from that main angle. Angle on the Z is gonna control the Z axis angle for 3D space. Z angle variance, same idea. It's just gonna allow for some variance on that parameter. And then rotation and spin, we're actually going to be skipping over for this because again, not super basic use there because you're going to need to be working inside of a 3D workspace already in order to have those really do anything for you. And just like with our inherit controls, we're not going to be covering sets because once you need sets, you'll be at a level already where you know that you need sets. So we're going to close that up and we're going to move over to style. And style is a really important one here. Unless you want just these little white dots, like if you're trying to make snow or something like that, you're going to be happy with this maybe. But style is where we get into our real shape options. So say instead of just a spec, a dot, we want a blob. So we grab blob. And now if we zoom in and look at these, they look significantly different than they did when they were just points. They're a little bit more amorphous. It's fun stuff. And then our size controls, we can increase the size of our individual particles. And I'm gonna change from blob to n-gon. And then n-gon is a polygon with n number of sides, right? So we can change that to three sides and then we have a three sided polygon or we can go all the way up to 12 sides and then we have a bunch of 12 sided polygons. We also have a starriness control and this will affect basically how sharp the points are. So if you reduce that, you can see they smooth out a bit and as we bring that back in, they get a little bit sharper. And if we zoom out, we can see that those all have little spikes and if we reduce the starriness, those spikes pretty much go away completely. So we'll go ahead and zap both of those back. Oh, you can see the spikes really well there, yeah? So, full starriness, lack of starriness. We'll go ahead and close that up. We'll leave those stars, and then we'll get our color controls open. Now here, you have a full choice of colors. Anywhere else that you'd be able to choose colors, you can choose those colors here. We're gonna go with kind of a burnt orange for what we're doing right now. That looks horrible. We're actually gonna go with yellow. So now we can actually see these yellow little stars here. And again, you have full control over this color. You can bring out red, you can bring out green, blue, and then alpha is gonna control how transparent your color is. Color variants, you can have some of them come in a little bit more orange. Some of them come in a little bit more toward the green side. You can fully vary these colors. It's actually a lot of fun because it allows you to get like a confetti type look and that can be really cool if that's what you're after. And then if you want to play with size anymore, there's another size control right here. Then we'll go ahead and grab our fade controls. You can completely fade these out and as you go over, more and more of them will fade, right? So we can move from this side and fade a bunch of those, leaving just a few or we can fade from this side and leave a different view. Now our merge controls, we're not gonna need to worry about right now, so we're gonna skip over those, and our blur controls are just going to blur our particles if we don't want so much definition. So now we'll skip on over into region, and region is actually going to change the region of your emitter. So right now we can see we have a sphere, which means that if we were to move around this, it would look the same from all sides, and it would be a sphere, like a ball. But if we change this to a rectangle, now we're emitting particles from a 2D space. So we can adjust that width right there, and then we can move that over. And again, all of this stuff is keyframeable. So our width is right there, then we'll move that down to the bottom, and now if we hit play, it should look like we have stars coming up 
from the bottom of the screen, just like that. And you could make those look like embers from a fire or really anything you want. You could make them live a lot longer with our lifespan controls that we had in our emitter tab right here. There's just a ton of different options. And then you have your translations, you have your X offset side to side. And if you wanna move those a little bit more slowly, more like fine tune, go ahead and hold left control while you slide them and you'll have a little bit more control there. Y is gonna change up and down and your Z offset is going to change the depth or how close it is to your 3D camera. Rotation then is going to change our rotation. But now, X is going to be forward and backward, Y is going to be up and down, and then Z again is going to be that depth. So it's spinning away from you, toward you, it's moving in that 3D space when you use your Z rotation. And then pivot is going to change where on your shape you are rotating from. So if we reset all of these and we put our X pivot point way over to that right side, and now we rotate on the X, you can see that it will rotate from that spot instead of from the middle. So you can put that pivot point wherever you need it to be and get those rotations set however you want. And really you have a ton of control here. So say now we're happy with the color and we wanna make sure that we have a few more in our spread here. So we'll hit play, we watch all those come up, we're like, mm, not enough, so we increase that number. And really all you're gonna be doing is bouncing back and forth between these menus, mostly region, style, and controls, until you get a particle effect that looks like what you're going for. And again, everything down from the center of this to the actual movement of the particles themselves is keyframable, so definitely use that. This is a very powerful tool. Once you have your particle emitter looking pretty much how you want it to, we're gonna pop over into our render, we're gonna go to settings, and then we're gonna click on motion blur, and we're gonna turn that up as high as our computer can handle. And then we'll scroll back to the beginning here and we'll hit play and it's really slow. So I'm gonna let this play through one time and then I'll come back and I'll show it to you once it's rendered. Still super slow. But the idea is when you turn motion blur on, it's going to blur it when there's motion. As you can see right here in viewer number two, we have a lot of very defined stars. And if we zoom in, we can see that those are individual stars and they are very crisp and they're gonna look that crisp the whole time. So we go back to the beginning here, and with motion blur on, you can see that the stars look a little weird, and then as we move forward, you can see that that motion blur is getting applied to them as they kind of stretch out, and then if we take that motion blur away, they become rigid again.